Let's find some day trades, swing trades, and option trades. Hello, traders. It is July 8th. We are about two and a half hours into trading. Market has been all over the board this morning. If you've been watching my market comments, you know that I feel this is a very low probability trading environment. We're in what I call a news vacuum and the dog days of summer where you don't have a lot of movement. There's not a lot of volume. So let's go into the S&P 500 chart, see what's going on. Yesterday, we had this big gap down open. We rallied back, filled the gap, and then the rest of the day, we gradually drifted lower. Some pretty heavy selling into the close, and we took out the low of the day, and we actually took out the prior day's low as well. We didn't quite fill the gap that was left from Monday, but we did that this morning. You can see how the market had these nice long green candles closing on their high, indicating that everything should be fine. This bar right here, was problematic. You can see how the market tried to make a new high and it closed on the low of that bar, making a long tan candle above. We also had a bearish 1OP cross in here. So I did try and short the market in here, got a little bit of a drift lower, and right in here, I ended up stopping out of the trade. Why? Because we had another bullish 1OP cross. I started to see long tails under body in here and that just told me, you know, I still felt like we had this downward sloping trend line intact. So that was good. But I felt like in light volume conditions, we've got a compression going on. I don't want to hang out in this trade. I'm just going to exit it. I think I made 40 cents on that trade. And then we had this big drop that I just missed. A brief pause and then follow through. This is on news that the Fed is going to, well, they may stop buying corporate bonds so the market didn't like that news and then we had a couple of long tails under body bullish cross in here you can see we're really not going anywhere when you have long tails and small bodies that just shows herky-jerky choppy trading conditions in my early morning comments which by the way I'm going to post a link in my video on how you can get access to my pre-open market comments I post them on Twitter be able to follow me there. I also post stock trades early in the morning on Twitter. I posted one today. It's an environment to really not do a lot of trading in. You can have some overnight swing positions. You can distance yourself from the action by selling out of the money bullish put spreads. That's really the strategy that you want to be using. You want to sell those spreads with a two-week time horizon meaning you want to pick spreads that expire in two weeks or less take advantage of that accelerated time premium decay that's the strategy to really use let the market float around do what it's going to do find stocks with relative strength sell those out of the money bullish put spreads we're going to be doing that with greater and greater frequency as earnings season approaches we've got a really good search that i showed you yesterday we'll take another look at it today but you can see here, really not a lot going on. It's just chopping back and forth. The 1OP indicator would suggest that we're going to see a little bit of selling in here. How would I approach that? Well, you've got a compression right here with tails above body. I would take the alert line. I would click right in here. It's kind of the lower end of this compression. If the market breaks below that horizontal support line and we've got this working, then I might consider a short position. But... This is a low probability trading environment. Look at this. Long candles. This should be bearish, bearish, bearish. No follow through. So I think we're just going to chop around today. If there's some momentum that eventually gets established, I suppose you can follow that momentum. We'll go to the daily chart and you can see that there's really not a lot going on. We had this downward sloping trend line right here that was breached to the upside. That produced one, two, three days of nice trading. The last two days have not been all that good. We had that nice gap up here Monday after the holiday weekend, and now we've given back those gains and we've filled in that gap. Where do we go from here? I don't think we're going to go anywhere far. There should be some bullishness as we head into earnings season. We have mega cap tech stocks will be reporting in about two and a half weeks or so. Once they start cranking up, I think buyers will be more engaged. You take the biggest companies, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Google, 
those companies comprise about 20% of the S&P 500. If you look at the QQQ, that's where the action has been. It is making a new all-time high. So if you're going to be trading from the long side, you want to make sure that you're in tech stocks. So there should be some optimism heading into those mega cap tech earnings. A lot of those companies have actually benefited from the economic shutdown. You have more people using social media. You've got people ordering products through Amazon for delivery. So these companies have benefited, but the rally has been very narrowly defined. And I don't see that as a good long-term sign for the market. We have COVID starting to increase again. The number of new cases uh, reached the 60,000 point yesterday. So that is the peak, 60,000 new cases in one day. That is the record high. So we have states like Florida, Texas, California, Arizona, either staying in phase three or those that went to phase four pulling back to phase three. And of the states that have done that, they comprise about 40% of our GDP. What does that mean? That means that the economic recovery is going to be very slow. That means that consumer spending is going to take quite a while to gain traction. This is not going to be a V bottom off to the races recovery. We're likely to see additional stimulus from the government. Right now, Congress is debating whether that should come in the form of PPP, which is what the Democrats want, and that would extend the unemployment benefits, the $600 a week that people are getting. That would extend it perhaps through September. Republicans, on the other hand, like the one-time lump sum payment of $1,200 that they did earlier. So in either case, regardless of which path we take, we can expect another helicopter drop of money. So the government stands ready to prop up this economy. That is a sugar high. That sugar high is not going to last. We need consumers out there spending. We need to be getting back on track, and we just don't seem to be right now. So I see us having a decent little bid to the market during earnings season, and that should remain as long as mega cap tech stocks have not reported. So Apple is on July 30th. I believe that the market will hold its bid pretty well until July 30th, but there will also be a lid, a cap on the market rally, and that cap will be held in place by increasing cases of COVID and a struggling economic recovery. So we go sideways in here. We chop around. I think we have a little bit of an upward bias to it. My main thing is that as we get to the midpoint of August, I think that we start to see some profit taking and some selling pressure. So I think that we need to keep those out of the money bullish put spreads within a two week time frame so that we can constantly reevaluate the news, constantly reevaluate stocks. And that's also a good strategy because as earnings season comes up, we're going to have lots and lots of post earnings play. So we're going to be looking for companies that have been able to rally after the number. Once we get into that mid-August time frame, though, politicians go on recess. So you're going to have the nation's capital vacant as the coronavirus cases increase. Usually the market gets pretty nervous when that happens. You've got a lot of traders taking vacation time, people trying to get their vacations in before the kids go back to school. And I'm looking for some market weakness. And I also think that in September we could see follow through selling. Really depends on how all of the polls are panning out. But right now, the way it stands, Joe Biden is in the lead, clearly in the lead, as we start getting closer to the election in September. If that continues to hold true, the market has not liked that news because it feels that the tax cuts that were initiated two years ago are going to be withdrawn. So those are the macro forces that are in play right now. We're in the dog days of summer. The market's really not going anywhere. There's not a lot of volume. If I can impress one point upon all of you, there are times when you want to spread your wings and trade aggressively. There are times when your best trade is no trade. And that is where we're currently at right now. We're selectively finding some out of the money bullish put spreads to sell. We had sold one last week on Walmart. That is a beauty. I think I referenced that yesterday. So that trade has worked out very, very well. But you can expect really choppy moves like this. Long tails and then all of a sudden, whoop, there we go. All right, now we get a nice green bar here. Is it going to hold? I don't know. 
from a technical standpoint, the fact that it's above these uh, the open of these long red bars right here. Yeah, okay, I could see the market moving a little bit higher, but those gains can quickly be stripped away by one of these long red candles. So let's see if we can find a nice trade in here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to be looking on the bullish side. That seems to be where we're finding the best opportunities because some of these stocks actually do have some nice momentum. And if I go through the list, I'm just going to go into relative strength 30 to see what's leading the charge. Alibaba has been super, super strong today. You can see that big breakout right there through horizontal resistance. Was able to hold the gains. Yesterday was a weak market day. You can see that that bar closed around the midpoint of that long green bar. So it was able to hold the gains from Monday. Today... Right back at it. Really, really strong rally. I think Alibaba wants to go higher. I think that's going to be a nice stock to be long. How would I play it? It's a little bit too far away for us to sell an out-of-the-money bullish put spread on it. If you wanted to get more speculative with it, you could use this 240 level. That resistance is now support. Filling in that gap, it still should be able to preserve that $240 price point. If you've got a short time horizon you could look at doing a trade like that i don't like chasing in this market so this is not like some of the other stocks though that have gone parabolic this one's actually got a nice horizontal breakout through longer term resistance so i think this is still fairly early in the stages of putting together a nice market rally so we can go into alibaba we can see what the july 10 options are trading for i'm interested in that 240 strike price and keying off of it and you can see if i click on the 240 puts and click on the 237.50 puts that spread is 11 cents bid offered at 21 cents we've got two and a half points between the strike prices i would need to get at least 50 cents for that so we're not going to be able to do that trade expiring friday nor would i expect to with only two days left till expiration we go out to the July 17th expiration, which is about a week and a half. Then we can go down to that 240 strike and the 237.50 strike. I need to reset this. So we're going to click on that. And there we can see that this spread is 40 cents bid offered at 58 cents. I need a 50 cent credit for it. Yes, I think this spread could actually work and you'll be tucked right in here below the open of that bar that should be horizontal support now at the 240 level and if the stock comes back and fills this gap in that support level should hold so yes i do like that there's a trade for you we're selling the alibaba july 17th 240 puts we're buying the 237 50 puts we're doing that for a credit of 50 cents so that one looks pretty good i did have another stock on my radar today that looked pretty good gsx is one that I day traded earlier today, had really good relative strength. I'm gonna put up the SPY chart. This is one that I did make money on. Let me be frank with you. You know, I made decent money on uh, this trade earlier today on GSX, but I went in and I took a position in Twitter and I gave these gains right back. Then I had a really nice short on AXP, made really decent money on that, but I ended up giving those gains back on LVGO. So. I've been spinning my wheels today. I had a nice trade on SPY. I made good money on that. I tried another SPY trade. I lost money on that. I'm just spinning my wheels. I'm not making any money today. In my early morning comments, I'd mentioned I'm trading half size in the morning. I'm trading quarter size in the afternoon. I don't want to risk a lot right now. I'm engaged in the market because I know that if I stay engaged, it's going to help me identify opportunities when the market conditions do improve. But for right now, keep it small so this is the type of setup that we look for you can see how this is this gray line is the s p 500 it was selling 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 hard i saw this stock continuing to grind higher it got long in here and i took a nice profit on it so that's the type of setup that we want to see axp was exactly the opposite right out of the gate you could see how the market was up 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 and then it finally was cresting in here. And I could see that this stock was down on the day. It had rallied up with the market, but it was starting to hit resistance. I saw that breakdown right in there. The upward sloping trend line was breached. So I shorted in here and it continued to fall back. 
And I'll show you a losing trade because we can lose, we can learn from our losing trades just as we can our winning trades. So we had this nice breakout, made money on Twitter right in here. Awesome, great. I saw the stock continue to push higher right in here when the market was pulling back. It looked like the stock had enough fuel to move against the market, and I felt that any little bid in the market, and I'd be able to make 40 or 50 cents on this stock. So I hung in the trade, and you can see how the market bottom fell out and the stock pulled back as well. So I should have respected this market move. I should not have tried to get back into this trade and force another winner out of it. I should have just stayed and waited for this market low. Then that presented a nice opportunity, which incidentally, I do like Twitter today. So I think this is another stock that looks good. Why do I like it? You can see here how it broke through the prior day's high, and it did so on extremely heavy volume. Look at the volume in Twitter. It is putting up some really big numbers today, and you can see how it's ready to take out the high of the day. If I go to the daily chart, you can see how this downward sloping trend line has been breached to the upside. The stock tested that 100-day moving average. It got above it, quickly got above the 200-day moving average. So we also have that working in our favor. Long green candles closing on their high. Yeah, I think Twitter is going to continue to push higher. So I've got one other stock that I want to show you, FSLY. This is one that I had mentioned yesterday in the chat room. Don't believe I highlighted it in the video. So look, I think this stock still has, got, has a lot of gas in the tank. So you've got this massive, massive rally here. And you've got the stock able to hold all of those gains and compress right near the high after all these gains. And sure enough, today we get the breakout on the upside. We're through that horizontal resistance point. The stock is currently on its high. I think this is one that you can day trade and swing trade from the long side. Yes, it's gone parabolic. Do I want to chase stocks? No, but this price pattern right in here tells me that it's still got some gas left in the tank, and I think it still continues to move higher. So if your time horizon is very, very short, day trade it, swing trade it overnight. Is it a good in, uh, trade for the next few weeks? Gosh, I don't know. After a run like that, I would be very skeptical. I would try and keep my trades very, very short term. So... There are some stocks that I like that I've shown you today. I like that Alibaba spread that I showed you. FSLY looks really good. I would not do a bullish put spread on this for the same reason that I mentioned in Alibaba. This train has left the station, okay? It is vulnerable to a large pullback, which is not what I want to see when I do bullish put spreads. So I would not favor that one, but I do like that Baba trade because... Alibaba, I think, is in the early stages of a breakout right now. Different story. It has not gone parabolic, so I think he can still key off of that SPY 240 level. I do want to show the, the uh, buy into earnings search. Let's take a look here. Yesterday, I showed you a really nice J&J &J spread. We were leverage, leveraging that 140 level. We were selling options that expire this Friday. That was nice. Let's see what else has come up here. Oh, we've got a couple of beauties here. So you can see stocks are starting to creep into this list. All of these companies announce earnings in the next two weeks, and they've had a 75% chance of rallying into the earnings announcement. This has been statistically verified over the last three years, the last 12 quarters. I don't like to use this strategy for stocks that have really run hard. I'm looking for stocks that have been quiet, stocks that have been flat, stocks that have major moving averages and support levels that we can lean on, like J&J. &J. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Abbott, I like Abbott. I don't think we can get a great credit for it, but I like the breakout through this downward sloping trend line on a daily basis. I like the fact that there's some really nice major moving averages right here around the $88 level, but you can see that they report earnings next week on July 16th. There's only one expiration date, which is July 10th, between now and then that we could use, so I'm not a big fan of that. Tesla, off to the races. Can't really do it there. So we're just going to click through here, and we'll see if we can find anything. This is Ally. That is a banking stock. It's above the 100-day moving average. Better yet, you could probably use this $18 support right here. 
I think that works out pretty well. I don't know if we're going to get a lot of option premium in those July 17 puts. And let me check this very quickly. Actually, it announces on expiration, so that's not going to work because that's a July 17th expiration and there are no weekly options. Banking stocks actually look weak. I've been noticing this. You can see how the stock BAC has been below the 200-day moving average. So this would also not be a favorite stock of mine to do this strategy with because it is in a strong downtrend. If I put up the 1OSI indicator, you can see how it is weak relative to the market. 1OSI below zero, weak relative to the market. This is actually a good stock to short if this market rally starts to falter. So let's take a look at it from that standpoint. You can see how it's been weak relative to the market. That orange line, again, below zero. So if you start getting a market dip here, we've got this bearish 1OP indicator cross right now. And if you have an upward sloping trend line here like that that's been violated, then I think you can start considering a short on a stock like BAC. Keep taking a look here. So I would not use that strategy, the buy into earnings strategy, where we sell an out of the money bullish put spread on that stock. Here you've got BBBY, retailer, upward sloping. Uh, actually, that's after the close today. You can see the A right there. So that's not going to qualify. So you just kind of knock through these. And if you are a swing trader, this is something that you can do after the close. eBay has gone parabolic. Find a day trade. I would not be doing any type of uh, bullish put spread on that with the stock so overextended here. GS, Goldman Sachs, in the banking sector, but relative to BAC that we just took a look at, got the 100-day moving average that you can lean on. That was resistance, breakout, now it's support. Got almost test there, test there. So it's been able to test that support level. Take a look at that closing price right there, which is 189.19. So if you can sell that, bullish put spread below that price level 715 is the earnings date 710 is the only thing we've got available to us don't know that we're going to get any decent premium with only two days left until expiration so we just keep looking for these opportunities see if anything strikes our fancy there aren't that many stocks to go through Morgan Stanley actually looks pretty dang good. This is interesting. I like this one because you can see how the stock has been compressing relative to the, re the rest of the financial sector. It's got a decent bid, and we've got the 200-day moving average coming in at the $45 level. It announces earnings next week. I'd mentioned that before, that earnings season is going to kick off next week. The first part of the cycle is heavily dominated by banking stocks, so we can expect a heavy dose of those results and let's see if there's anything in the $45 puts now four cents bid offered at six cents expiring Friday really nothing there for us to sink our teeth into Microsoft has been super strong would avoid that Netflix strong any tech stock has been super strong so we're coming up dry right now and that's okay but this is a very effective search to use it's one that's actually pretty easy to use here's one wba has a tendency to rally into earnings take a look at this we've got that on seven nine so actually it's going to be announcing earnings tomorrow sometime so that also doesn't qualify this search is going to have more and more candidates in it with each passing day because more stocks will be coming into that two-week window. You can sell out of the money bullish puts reds on it. If you really like the technical setup and you've got a nice support level nearby, you can actually buy the stock and make sure that you exit that trade into the earnings announcement. So do not hold over that earnings announcement. This is just a pre earnings trade we're going to be having a lot of post earnings trades that we're also going to be watching and we've got a strong after earnings search that we'll be using for that that's all i've got for you today baba looks good f s l y looks good twitter looks good if you like the content please give it a thumbs up make sure to check out my twitter feed and you can see the link in my description if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you also turn on your notifications so that you never miss any of these videos. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it light.
It's a low probability trading environment, very choppy market conditions. We're in a news vacuum. The economic news is behind us. The earnings news is still ahead of us. So for the next week, you're going to see light volume, a lot of noisy kind of trading back and forth. So keep it small, keep your powder dry, save your capital for when the opportunities are really good. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.